It is a great pleasure to welcome you all to the third annual Global Human Rights Symposium. The Human Rights Fellowship emerges from a broader human rights initiative at Gallatin, attempting to link human rights practice with academic work in human rights. Hi, my name is Carolyn and I'm a senior at Gallatin concentrating in culture and globalization with a minor in environmental studies. This past summer I worked at the Trailblazer Foundation, a US founded organization based in Siem Reap, Cambodia on drinking water rights. This is the plaque for Trailblazer that we had in the office um, with the Cambodian flag in the middle and the royal family on either side. The Trailblazer Foundation focuses on drinking water access as a pathway to human rights through sustainably implementing filters and wells in rural villages. To put this into perspective in the general region, currently only 14% of Cambodia's population has direct access to clean water well, in contrast, 98% of neighboring Thailand has access. Although access to drinking water might be shuffled off as a human need, having needs fulfilled creates a nest in which human rights can grow, both complement and depend on one another. The United Nations officially recognizes that all humans have the right to drinking water and sanitation, and that these act as gateways essential to the realization of all human rights. As the Economic and Social Council of the United Nations succinctly states, the human right to water is indispensable for leading a life in human dignity. Water security is overall an essential part of human security. And clearly, Cambodia has water, um, and a significant portion of the population actually lives in floating villages, like um, that one right there in Tonle Sap Lake. But the main problem is accessing clean water for drinking, cooking, washing, like not only washing clothes, but also washing yourself. Trailblazer works within uh, the villages to harness community-based leadership, namely through the village chief, but also through the village at large, to help install filters and wells into communities that need them the most. Trailblazer uses Biosend filters, and I won't get into the technical science part here, but there's a graph in the middle and basically the sifted and washed sands creates a biofilm to then organically purify the water. Not only did I work on making the biosyn filters and their components, I helped to install them in the villages and also learned about the filter payment system. Each receiving family chosen by the village chief has to pay 13,000 real or $3.25 for a filter or 20,000 real or $5 for a well, both of which are substantial sums of money in Cambodia. Trailblazer also made sure to educate recipients about filter maintenance and how to use the filter. Um, and you can see my former coworker, Bone Knee, um, has this blue booklet, which I also have, that you can look at during, after the first panel or after all of the panels. And it basically it has pictures explaining how to maintain the filter, how to use the filter, etc. The money collected from the wells and filters goes to the village fund, a fund from which villagers can borrow money for endeavors ranging from hospital visits to buying fertilizer to funding seasonal migration to Thailand for working, which I found to actually be an overwhelmingly common trend in Cambodia, which is interesting. I wrote a case study about one of these borrowers, <coughs> Ming. Um, her story was absolutely amazing, and the garden that she planted was beautiful. Many borrowers I talked to cited that the village fund helped them borrow money without the bureaucracy and huge amount of paperwork um, that large banks require, and also they didn't have the fear of being rejected using the village fund. Trailblazer made a sustainable base not only for providing foundational health and livelihood benefits due to drinking water access, but also for the Village Fund microfinance program so that Trailblazer could in the end phase out its involvement, a valuable trait that I saw very little of during my time in Cambodia. That all being said, I personally did not feel fulfilled with my time with Trailblazer. After two months with Trailblazer, I went to Phnom Penh where I met with a huge variety of other human rights organizations and learned about the other human rights initiatives going on in Cambodia, especially related to democracy and environmental justice. During my two months in Siem Reap, and then again later in Phnom Penh, I met with leaders from the Khmer Youth Association and actually helped them manage a voter awareness campaign um, in a village in Puk District in Siem Reap province. 
And this brings me to the main backdrop of my entire time in Cambodia, the July 28th elections. Signs were everywhere. It was pretty hard to miss if you were there that the elections were going on. The political situation is important to understand in order to grasp how human rights groups can engage in the context that they are in. Hun Sen, Southeast Asia's longest ruling prime minister installed by the Vietnamese army in 1985, was going head to head with Sam Rainsy. Sam Rainsy is on the top and Hun Sen is pictured on the bottom. Um, Sam Rainsy from the Cambodian National Rescue Party. Sam Rainsy, who is formerly exiled, is a progressive and prominent candidate challenging Hun Sen's regime. And he envisions a Cambodia where social services such as clean drinking water access would be the norm. And while candidates campaigned, I've never seen citizens so passionate um, and vocal about necessary change to happen in their country, especially in a country where uh, freedom of speech is not an inalienable right by any means at all. The election was also the first election in which youth who are newly eligible to vote would not remember the Civil War, which officially ended in 1998, regardless of how much sometimes threatening propaganda Hun Sen posted about this in his favor. The election um, period also exposed a lot of issues that I studied during my independent study in the spring semester uh, with my advisor before going to Cambodia. So that was interesting to see them, see all the issues actually happening and going on. Although Trailblazer was certainly one of the more sustainable NGOs, like I said earlier, I became a bit unenlightened with the work and change that human rights NGOs accomplish or do not accomplish. It seemed that the NGOs enabled the current Hun Sen government to continue uh, its corrupt practices and not achieve necessary laws, measures, protections, etc. for the country at large. Though Trailblazer's argument to this was that people need water now, we cannot wait for the government to provide pipelines or even show an interest um, in providing support. It was all too clear to me, especially during my time in Phnom Penh, that the government really didn't have an initiative to get a lot of the health, education, drinking water infrastructure completed. Many NGOs were almost a bit like band-aids in Cambodia from what I saw, patching cuts and scars from historically corrupt practices without trying to end the corruption. Although I, wanted, I want to emphasize this is not all the NGOs. Um, I mean, it, this is what I saw for the most part. International human rights as a framework um, provides incredible ideals and rhetoric, but in my opinion, it needs to really be systematically integrated into governments and then practice. So many people I talked to in Phnom Penh reiterated it over and over again that most of the laws were there, just not implemented how they should be by the current government. This is not meant to be cynical by any means, um, but just to help foster a better understanding of what can feasibly be done in a country where corruption is unfortunately the norm. I wanted to thank Gallatin so much for providing me with this opportunity. It shaped me and my concentration in more ways than really ever imagined. Um, and exposed me to new people not only in Cambodia, but also here during the human rights, the class that we were all in. The speakers that Vasuki brought in were amazing and also all the other fellows. Thank you.